passed by, and a great and strong wind torn into the mountain, tore into the mountain, and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after that, a delicate voice. Amen. Everyone can be seated. My brethren, tonight we see the experience of a great servant of the Lord. All of us, we know the story of Elijah. And if we are able to, in one phrase, in one sentence, recap Elijah's life and his whole trajectory, what could you think we could say? Like of what the Lord did throughout his life. Personally, I would say Elijah, a man that was used greatly by God. Because truly this was the case. And the Lord, through Elijah and through his ministry, he operated miracles. The Lord, he used Elijah in such a way that this infuriated the devil. It made him very mad. Because every time the servant of the Lord, he comes up and he positions himself and opens his heart so that the Lord can use them to complete the word, to save lives, so many people oppose them and so many people are mad because of this and this we see through Elijah's life to the point where to where this great man he asked God to take his life and when he asked God to take his life we see that at the end of the day Elijah was just a man but he was very strong and he was very valiant. He went in front and faced about 800 and something people because all the people were divided and he, um, he challenged them. So he came in front of this crowd of 800 people and he said to them, I'm going to pray to my God and you guys are going to pray to your guys to your God and whoever whoever God responds with fire is the true God and Elijah's God our God responded with fire one time um, it was the king's wedding it was he was getting married to a woman from another country that idolized other gods and Elijah, he prayed to God, and there came a drought for many years, for some years. And during this whole time of drought, Elijah, he was fed by the birds. God provided for Elijah, and he provided for him and for his life. Elijah went to the house of a widow, and this widow made a little something for Elijah to eat. And because of her act towards Elijah, the Lord blessed her life greatly. And another occasion, Elijah went to the king to speak to him. And everyone said to him, don't do this. The, the king is going to be so mad and upset. But the Lord was with him. My brethren, every time that the servant of the Lord opens his heart, in fellowship with God, God will operate miracles. God is going to operate. You can be in the worst difficulty challenge of your life. You can be alone. Elijah here, he was alone against 800 people. It was 400 people from Baal and then 400 people from another. But he went in the name of Jesus and the Lord honored him 
because that's what God does. Every time that the servant of the Lord enters into something challenging, a, per, um, a persecution, something that he says, I'm not going to be able to handle this. But if he maintains his fellowship with God and his communion with God, God will operate and God will deliver them every time. This, this happened so many times in the word. Daniel, Daniel's friends, in the, in the fire, in the um, lion's den. And a lot of the times, the Lord, he's not going to take us away from this challenge. He allows it for happen. He allows it to happen. He allows us to go through something difficult. Why does he allow us to go through struggles? Because he goes with us and he makes us victorious. This is what our God is. He doesn't let us go through difficulties alone. He does it with us. It's a God of love, a God of justice, a God of fairness. And if we here give the opportunity to, for everyone to talk about their experiences and to talk about their testimonies, do you have victories in, um, in prayer and pleading? If we gave the microphone to everyone to talk about their stories, we would spend the entire night just talking about testimonies and how the Lord has showed up for us every time. There are times where we think we don't have a solution, where every door is closed, not one door is open, not one light is shining. But in the right moment, at the right time, the Lord shows up and He provides and He acts in our favor. Um, one of these days I was listening to uh, an experience of an adolescent. He was at school. And in school, you always have, you know, the cuter kids, you know, the more popular kids. And then there's two sidekicks to this popular kid, right? And then he has like a whole group that follows him. And then he's like the leader, he's the popular kid, but he's kind of like a bully. And and then on the other hand, there was this our the servant, the adolescent, and he used to bring his little lunchbox, and the bully used to come and take his lunch, and so um, the adolescent used to be hungry, and he would not eat anything. This would happen almost every day, and then there came a time where he was like, I I can't stand this anymore. He didn't. He didn't even care so much that the other one took his food. He, but he just didn't want to be hungry. He wanted his own food, but he didn't say anything. He didn't say anything to his mother, to his pastor, to his father. But he went home and he prayed. And he prayed to the Lord and he said, "Lord, have mercy. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I can't endure this treatment any longer." And so a few days passed by. And he was quietly in his corner. And then, and then the, the bully came up to him and he said, I want to do a, a friendship treaty with you. And then he said he w had a dream. And then he, the bully said he saw, he was in his room and he saw that someone came into his room. It was this big, strong man. And then he said to the bully, this big man that came into his room that he saw, he said, I am friends with the adolescent and you have to leave him alone because I'm really close friends with him. So and then the bully went ahead, went back to the adolescent and he said, I'm no longer going to bully you and you're now we're friends because he got scared. And he said that because he said that he wants to be friends with that big man that came into his room. But this is what God, this was just all God. He operated in the middle of this difficulty of this adolescent. And everyone glorified the name of the Lord. And at the end of the day, everything was okay. And now he's no longer hungry. He eats every day. He doesn't have to be hungry at school, but it's, it's simple experiences like this, but it's an experience that 
we remember and who changes the life of the person who goes through it. And prayer is the most important because prayer goes where our hearts cannot, where our words cannot reach, where our actions cannot reach. The prayer in our pleading changes things and um, operates miracles. Elijah, he, um, Jezebel, she said that we cannot accept this prophet. We cannot accept Elijah doing this. We have to end him. We have to finish him. And so she promised his death. She said, if you are here tomorrow at the same time, you are dead. Jezebel saying this to Elijah. And Elijah's human side he wanted to run away. He wanted to. Are you? He didn't want to stick around to see if it would happen or not. So he walked for a day, and then he sat down. He walked for a full day, and then he went and rested near a tree, and he fell asleep. And so the angel of the Lord, while he was asleep, came to Elijah and brought him food. And he woke Elijah up, and Elijah ate the food that the angel had brought for him, and then. When he had the energy, when he had the energy um, from the food that the angel gave him, he walked another 40 days and 40 nights just with the one meal that the angel had given him. Can you imagine if you ate one meal and then you walked for 40 days and 40 nights without eating again, drinking again? This is what the Lord does. Yeah, I bet the ladies would have liked that. Eat one time and then 40 days without eating. But that's what the Lord does. It's miracles. He operates miracles. Elijah, and he walked for 40 days. Because whenever man, he he walks his path, but he he's scared. He's scared of dying. He forgets everything that the Lord has done for him in the past. Because that's what happens. We forget when we are in the middle of something very difficult. However, when if we w- go to ruin our fellowship with God and we get tired and we get worried and we get doubts, then we get tired. We, we aren't able to do it. But when we accept God and when we accept His help and His assistance, we can walk for a long time. We can walk for a long time because they enter into something that is no longer human, but it's something that is from the Holy Spirit, only from God. He is not guided by his fears and his doubts and his worries. No, but he is strengthened and he's fed by what the something that comes from the best, something that comes from eternity. I don't know how many days you've been walking. I don't know how long you've been suffering for. But one thing I can tell you, a lot of us are walking from, have been walking for more than 40 days. A lot of us are strong in the Lord. And we know this because the Lord has sustained us. He has given us nutrients and food. He has operated miracles in our midst. Doors have been opened. And we are seeing the glory of God. And the word of the Lord says that Elijah, he ate the food of the angel. And with that food, he had enough strength to watch 40 days and 40 nights until where did he walk to? Do you remember? He walked as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. You can answer the question. It's Horeb. So he went to the mountain of Horeb, and this mountain is the mountain of God. The mountain of God. Where are we today? Hmm? We are at Mount Horeb. Here, this is the mountain of God. This is the house of the Lord. This is a place called the house of prayer. This is where we unite. This is where we are able to cry at the feet of the Lord. Here is where we hear the voice of the Lord. 
we are comforted by the Lord and by the Holy Spirit. Here is where our children are preserved from the world and protected from the drugs, from the addictions, from the corruption. Why here? Why here? Because here is where they learn that the best option is to be before the Lord. And this is a miracle. We are able to follow along in our children's in our children growing up and we can see that they are learning about the mysteries of the Lord and so that at the right moment they could choose for themselves the best choice which is to continue to serve the Lord there's no greater price than this there's no greater reward or gift than this and this only happens at Mount Horeb the mountain of God but it's interesting because we see that when Elijah he arrives at this mountain where did he go into? He went into a cave. And he stayed there. He went into the cave and he stayed there. What does the cave mean? What does it represent? Does it have any light? No. A cave is dark. You can't see anything. You, you're there and you're scared. And what's interesting is because there are many people who are in the caves. They want to be in the house of the Lord on Mount Horeb, but they're looking at the wrong places. They're looking in a cave. And what does it mean to f look for a cave inside of the mountain? It's when you isolate yourself. It's when you don't accept what the Lord is trying to say. It's when you are scared to open your heart and to say glory to God, to sing a song. You, you try to phase out what the Lord is trying to do in your life. You don't speak of the Lord. You don't act as a testimony of his word. There's a lot of people who are like this, who are living in the churches, but they are covered and buried in a, in a cave. And then they say at the end of the day, oh, I'm alone. I'm, I'm go doing this alone. I go to church, but it's only me, me and myself and I, and no one else. And do you think this is right? No. Because Mount Horeb is a place for what? It's a place for you to hear the voice of the Lord. Mount Horeb is a place of fellowship with the Lord. It's a place of intimacy with God. It's a place where you enter, and it's here. It's no longer you yourself. It's, it's you with the Lord. And you're going to put before the Lord everything that you lived, your prayer, your cry, your tears, your pleading. You're going to put before the Lord what you cannot do. And through prayer and through supplication, Lord's going to answer you. In the cave, it's a place outside of the revelation of the Lord. It's not from God. But when you are on the mountain of God, when you are on Mount Horeb, you are participating in the services, in the meetings, in the early dawns, in the visits. It's when you're doing all of this for the Lord, you're getting involved in the church. Do you want to be an instrumentalist? Do you want to be part of the praise group? Do you want to help in whatever it is that the church needs? That's what it means to be on Mount Horeb. And that's what it means to be here and to be willing to serve the Lord because it's here that the Lord has given us. Lord, he, The Lord, He has fed us. He has sustained us, not for us to go out into the world in any way that we want to go. No, the Lord has fed us and sustained us so that we can be prepared here inside the church first so that when we are out in the world, we can be a testimony of what the Lord does to our families, to our own lives, to our work lives, to our children's lives that's what it means to be in Mount Horeb but those who are neglecting this neglecting the work of the Holy Spirit they're wrong and why do you think they're wrong you, you may ask pastor why are they wrong I'm just here I'm doing my own thing it's me and God I'm not doing anything wrong but the Lord knows but because Elijah, he was in the cave, but he wasn't happy in the cave. He was sad, or the cave. He was sad. He was crying in the cave. 
And so the Lord, he was like, what are you doing, Elijah? You are a servant. You have been used so much by me, and you, you're just like this. You have to go out. This is not a place for you. My brother, if you are not working for the Lord, if the Holy Spirit isn't finding a place in your heart so that the Lord can rest in your life, you have to get out of the cave. Right? You have to get out. You have to go outside. You have to completely remove yourself from that situation. You have to get out of the cave completely. You can't do it halfway. You can't do it a quarter of the way. You have to do it all the way. Tonight, the Lord wants to take away many people who are hidden in the cave, and He wants to bring them to the outside. People who are scared to say that I'm a servant of the Lord. People who don't have that boldness and the audacity to speak of the Lord. Some um, people that at their workplaces, no one would be able to know that they're a servant of the Lord. People are confused. They don't know if they're Christian or not Christian. It's a difficult situation, right? But us as servants of the Lord, as the church, we are called to bring a message to the world. And Elijah, he was called to um, bring this message to the world. And we're being prepared to deliver this message. And what is this message? That Jesus is coming. So prepare your life, my brother, because God is coming. Jesus is coming. You have to prepare your life to encounter God and to meet up with God. And you're not going to meet him in the cave. You have to meet him when you are outside of the cave, when the Lord speaks to you and when you expect, accept him into your heart. But it's not going to be through violence. Or he's not going to force you. How does the Lord speak to man? With a delicate and small voice. And that's what reaches the heart of man. It's not grand gestures or, or very crazy, extravagant things. No, God operates in the silence. He operates when you are, when you are sad and in, 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 in a situation that you cannot remove yourself from. And it's in that moment that the Lord comes and he takes you out of that situation. And he tells you to come. Get out of this cave. Because I want to use you. And this experience was the experience of Elijah. But tonight, we're going to take out the name of Elijah and put our own names there. Of sister or brother. Because the Lord is operating tonight. He's operating renewal. He's operating experiences. And he's giving new opportunities to everyone who's hidden and who's hiding. Everyone who's just been in their corner content. You're not going to... If you want salvation, you don't have to go out and tell everyone. You can have your salvation to yourself. That's completely fine. But the church, we're not here for that. We're not here to just take care of ourselves. No, we're here to, ex to share the word and to share the, the gospel and the good news that the Lord is coming. We can't keep that to ourselves. And tonight, I... The Lord, we're just asking that the Lord may take away the shyness and take away the doubt and to take away every ounce of disbelief that we have in our hearts and he can give us the boldness in um, supermarkets, at the bus stop, at school, work. If you have the opportunity, if you are in fellowship with the Lord, he's going to use you and he's going to speak through your life. If you testify and um, 
say your testimony to people, the Lord will, through your life, use you and to save other people because that's our goal here. We have to share to as many people as we can that Jesus is coming and we have to be prepared to meet with him. Amen. Let's hear a song now. to man when he's in Mount Horeb. He spoke to Moses and he saw the glory of God. He received the, the commandments in the cave. He'll, he's going to tell you, come out of there. This is not your place because the Lord wants to always continue with the man. He wants to maintain this fellowship. He wants this path. He wants to hold hands with you. He speaks and we listen and when he speaks we have to obey and if we do this we can continue to see the glory of God I'm going to ask for one of the worker men to pray Lord God we pray because your word has reached our hearts it's sustained us Lord And it's allowed us to walk in your path and in your presence. We are grateful for this salvation and for this mystery that reveals itself to us each and every day. We pray and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, when we prayed today for the service, the Lord showed a woman. And in her heart, her thoughts she kept thinking in her heart it's so hard to serve the Lord I can't do it, it's impossible and with this feeling 
she can't like firm herself in his in the Lord's presence. And she goes in and out. She has ups and downs. It's just it's hard. But tonight, the Lord has showed to her, look, this is the way. This is the path. This has the word. It has the food. Has the sustenance that you need to take you to the mountain of God, Mount Horeb, because. Mount Horeb is the only way to go to go to heaven and what is the path what is the way it's Jesus and Jesus is telling us today that here if it's hard it's hard for everyone right everyone it's not just hard for you everyone is going through it goes through it and the, the Bible never tells us that we're never gonna have struggles and that it's, everything's going to be easy. No, the Bible literally tells us it's going to be hard. You're going to go through struggles. But have good faith. And we are needed. We need to do our part. And if you do your part, if you are in fellowship with God, then the Holy Spirit, He's going to have control over your life, over your your desires. And he's going to bring you away from sin. And he's going to take you away from sin. We're never going to be able to escape sin. But with the Holy Spirit, he's, the Holy Spirit is going to help you to sin less. And to help you through your struggles. And if you open your heart to the Lord, you'll see how much God is going to help us through everything. We have another vision um, about two men, um, and it's similar as the first one. They find it very hard to serve the Lord, and they don't feel like they have the conditions. And if we were to really, truly analyze our own lives, no one would be here. No one would be here. But it's through us believing in the Lord and trusting in him that we are able to see his miracles and the more that we see the Lord's miracles and his mysteries that have been revealed to us the more that we have a desire to come back to Mount Horeb the more we want to be here listening to the Lord of the, the word of the Lord amen so let's pray Lord God receive our praise Lord receive our service that was completely turned towards you and we ask Lord that through this service that we can show you how we feel about you this is our gratitude and our gratefulness for you this is why we are here tonight God because you have blessed us you have preserved our lives you have preserved our families in our homes in our work we you have preserved our health and for this reason, we are happy. We have joy to be in your presence. Give us a, a week of victories and so that we could always be listening to your sweet voice. We pray thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name, we say the grace, the marvelous grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and our eternal Father and the consolations of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be poured over all of us now and forever. Amen. Everyone can be seated now. Um, now we're going to have everyone, if you want a prayer, if you want a prayer, um, the, the, someone will come to you and pray for you.